I start looking around for where this wheel went. I look up, it's in the air. Story time with Two Blue Fred. You guys watched the Blues story um, a couple of days ago about his first certified ride for the Iron Butt for his thousand miles in 24 hours. He reminded me of things that I had forgotten. So um, we talked about it for a minute and he came to me and he said, dude, you need to tell me about your Iron Butt experience. The story I'm gonna start with is uh, I'm gonna tell you about the first attempt I made at a thousand miles in 24 hours. We were up in the Ozarks and we were coming back from the Tunica area, Memphis area. I kind of got it in my head that I wanted to do a thousand miles on the way back, but Memphis to Houston, it ain't a thousand miles. It's like 500 or something. I had a friend in Chattanooga, so I made a phone call and I decided to go and hang out with my friend. So I left from Memphis and we went over towards Chattanooga and Blue kept going home towards South Carolina and, and I laid up in, uh, in Chattanooga and spent some time with a friend of mine. Spent the night there, got up the next day, first thing in the morning, and started heading out on this ride. We'll go ahead and put the route that I took. So I'd looked at the route a little bit and I knew that from Chattanooga to Houston wasn't a full thousand miles. So I knew I had to do a little bit of something. It was like 900 or 800. We'll give you the number right here. So I started looking around and I saw Atlanta, I saw New Orleans, and I saw some of these other dog legs that I could add to the trip to pull off the miles. I said, okay, great. I got up at about five o'clock in the morning out of Chattanooga and, uh, and I hit the road and I headed towards Atlanta. It was dark. It was a little chilly. It wasn't super chilly, but it was a little chilly. This is before the time that I had heated gear on the bike. So I layered up, had a couple of layers on, and I started rolling. I get down towards Atlanta. The sun starts coming up, and I'm watching my GPS on the bike. I'm on a 2008 Goldwing for this trip, and I'm looking at the GPS, and I see if I take the outside loop around Atlanta, that's going to add some miles for me. I'm like, great, let's do that. So I get off, I haul off in that direction. And I'm thinking in my head about the different points in, uh, on my route that I'm gonna need to stop and get fuel to prove to the IBA that I had gone this longer route. So I get off on this outside leg of Atlanta and I stop and I grab fuel. I get a receipt, everything's great. I get back on the bike and I keep rolling. I get off of the loop and I head, keep heading south uh, southwest towards uh, uh, Louisiana, uh, down through Alabama, Mississippi, going to pick up on I-10, head across. And I'm just rolling, listening to my music, having a good time. Everything's great and wonderful. Somewhere along the way, I just, I get lost in my head and I start thinking about things that don't really make any difference. And I start to try to figure out, okay, how do I continue to add miles to this thing? And I'm watching the odometer, I'm watching my distance to the house, I'm watching everything, and I'm like, okay. I get a little hungry. I slide off of the interstate, and uh, this is the first time that I remember doing this trick, but uh, I was concerned about my time. I wanted to get back to the house before it got too dark. You know, I was trying to get the whole thing done in about 14 hours, which is aggressive. Um, but uh, so I slid off the freeway, found myself a Burger King. I ordered three double cheeseburgers with no pickles and no onions. And every time I do that at Burger King, they tell me, sir, we don't put onions on the burger. All right, fine, just no pickles then. Get these three double cheeseburgers. I immediately scarf one of them. I mean, I'm like, <clears throat> and the whole thing's in my mouth. I grab the other two and I stick them up on the dashboard, okay? I go ahead and fill up with gas. Um, and I'm probably somewhere in, uh, in, in Alabama, maybe Mississippi at this point, on I-10. I throw the other two burgers up on the dashboard. I get rolling again after my fuel stop, and I'm rolling down the interstate. And I get up to speed. I set the cruise control. 2008 Gold Wings got a cruise control. And that bike was smooth, I'm telling you right now. You could ride that thing miles and miles and miles. Blue loved that ST. Blue loved that ST1300, man. And I tell you, that Gold Wing... I love it too. I like the Harley. I love the Harley. It's a fun bike to ride, but there's nothing wrong with that Goldwing either. I truly enjoyed riding that bike. I'm rolling down the highway 
And I grabbed that burger off the dashboard after I got the cruise control. And I opened that thing up and I start, you know, crank the helmet open because I got one of those modular helmets. And I cranked the helmet open and I started eating my burger rolling down the highway. This little girl in the car proceeds to drive by watching me eat my burger on the motorcycle ride down the road. She just looking at me. I wave. She waves back. She keeps going. I'm sure it was a funny story for her too. It's a funny story for me. But that is not the last time that I've eaten a burger heading down the road. You know, you buy it, you throw it up on the dashboard, you get up to speed, you crank that thing open. I've eaten burgers, I've eaten chicken nuggets, I've eaten french fries that way. It's not a bad thing to do and it helps you to keep your time, right? Once again, we're trying to make time here. I'm looking at the map again and I'm trying to figure out, you know, where my miles are, how many miles I've got, how everything is going. And I see this other dog leg that I can take uh, down through New Orleans. Now, you have I-10 going across the, the southern part of the United States, and I-10 dips down through New Orleans, and I-12 cuts across. So I-12 is the straightest way, it's like 80 miles, but if you dip down through the city of New Orleans on I-10, you're gonna add a couple more miles. So I go ahead and I take the left-hand turn, and I head on down through New Orleans. Once again, mindful of my gas receipts. So I pull over down in New Orleans. Once again, it's not the fastest way, so I need a documented stop down there in New Orleans <clears throat> to prove to the IBA that I stopped down there. I get my fuel, I get back up on the road, I keep rolling. I get back up onto I-10 past Baton Rouge. And I'm rolling down through Louisiana. This stretch of Louisiana on I-10 past Baton Rouge is kind of miserable. There is a long bridge across the Atchafalaya uh, just before you get to Lafayette which is nice. It's uh, about 22, 26 miles long. It is the, it is one of the top 10 longest bridges in the United States. I think it's actually down at like number seven, but we'll verify that and put it right here for you. As I'm rolling across on I-10, I see this guy up in front of me. He's a truck. He's pulling a trailer. There's nothing on the trailer or nothing I remember. It, it might have had something like, I don't know, a, a pallet of grass or I, I don't even know I, I, don't, I don't remember what it had on it it might and it might have been empty but I'm rolling down the highway the cars are kind of stacking up a little bit the next thing I hear is I hear this noise it's a pop I look forward and one of the wheels on this here trailer is missing I start looking around for where this wheel went <laughs> I look up, it's in the air, it's coming down, and it's coming down, and it hits, you know, I mean, it looked real close, but it was probably far away, but it hit like right there, and it bounced again, and I'm like, that was odd. It didn't hit me, it was a little frightening. The guy pulled over, I looked at him. I may have exchanged a gesture with him, but it really wasn't his fault, but I was stressed. You know, there was a tire in the air flying at me. It was frightening. Still rolling through Louisiana, rolling on into Houston, staying on I-10. You take the dip down. Once again, looking for miles, okay? You've got the Beltway 8 in Houston that rolls around along the south side of town. So I go ahead and I take the south loop of the belt uh, you get off of I-10, uh, Laporte, uh, uh, Clear Lake area. You go down, you come around, you head down towards, um, you head down through Pearland, uh, Missouri City, you know, back up, and you connect back up to 290 on the northwest side. And once again, it's added, you know, probably 30 miles at least to my trip at this point. At this point in time, I'm basically 15 miles from the house. I'm almost there. I look at my odometer as I get back onto 290. I'm at 998 miles. I got it. I'm 15 miles from the house. I got this thing. I pull on up. I exit 290. I grab my last receipt. I head on to the house. I park the bike in the garage, take a shower. I put all my paperwork together. I slap it on my desk. I got it. I got it. Or so I thought. I sit down the next day. I left out of, of Chattanooga around 4 or 5. 
early in the morning before it was light. And I got to Houston before the sun had gone down. So, I mean, and it was summertime, so it might have been 8, 8 15. The sun was still up. I mean, it was still daylight, but I'd made it. And there's an hour time change, right? But I'd made it. Everything was good. So, I get up the next day after sleeping because I was tired. And I start going through my receipts and I go through my notes and my documentation and everything. And I pull up Google and I map my route in Google. 989 miles. I'd missed it by like 10 or 15 miles. I wasn't happy. It was a lot of work try to do this thing and I'd missed it by like 11 miles or so it was it was a low number we'll give you the exact number I called up blue told him I said man I missed it he's like by how much like 11 12 miles he's like man that sucks I'm like yeah it does but it was my first attempt it was the first time that I had tried to do a thousand miles um, I enjoyed the trip and since then, I have two documented thousand mile trips. And we'll tell you those stories later. I have probably 10 or 12 undocumented thousand mile trips. And yes, the documentation matters. It's important. But I've driven, I've ridden on the bike from South Carolina to Houston multiple times. And I've done it in a day almost every time. They're not documented, but I've pulled them off. I know that I've done them, but I have two documented trips. So when people say, well, yeah, but I have the documentation to prove that I can do a thousand miles in 24 hours. So I, I've gone, I made the effort and the documentation is important. We, I mean, we've got lots of people that we know, our buddy Bill, that boy at the drop of a hat, he'll just run out and do a thousand miles. He's like, why'd you do a thousand miles? I don't know. Go see the biggest ball of twine, something. Who knows what, right? He just wanted to go see something. He's a great guy, man. He's, he's a monster. I love him. But that is my first attempt at a thousand mile documented trip. It was a failure. It's okay. I learned a lot. And what I did learn was you need to plan the trip. You need to make sure you have your route correct. You need to know that the miles are right. Plan your gas stops if you really want to be that you know, that tight with your schedule, but know your trip, you know, know where you need to be by what time. So you know that you're staying on track you can stay straight in your head. I didn't really get tired on that trip. I felt good the whole time for the most part, uh, but I got distracted. I lost sight of what I was doing and I had forgot that the odometer miles from the gold wing versus the actual miles, they're not quite the same, which you run into on a lot of bikes. So plan for your trip, set it up, set aside time, make sure you're ready to go. This is two blue Fred, freaking ride every day and freaking tell the story every day.